everyone, it's Karis. I'm back at home. I am back. I have my bookshelves back behind me and I am so happy and excited to finally get some time to film some more videos in front of this backdrop, which I definitely prefer a hundred times more than my shelves at university. So I've only been back home for a day, but just being back here, I've been feeling a little bit nostalgic. This has also been aided by the fact that I've realised that I only have approximately three weeks left of being a teenager. I'm turning 20 on the 19th of April. So this nostalgia ultimately led to me wanting to start a new series on my channel and in each one of these videos I want to talk about a different author or book series or even potentially movies and different things like that in the future that make me feel really nostalgic basically things that I really really used to love when I was younger and I thought I would start off this series in a perfect way for me by talking about Jacqueline Wilson. This just seemed like the ideal place to start, I couldn't see myself choosing any other thing to begin with because she was my absolute favourite author when I was a child. So yeah, I thought I would begin by showing you all of the Jacqueline Wilson books that I own and then I'm going to sort of talk a little bit about my experience with Jacqueline Wilson and why she makes me feel so nostalgic and why I loved her so much when I was younger and then I think I'm going to talk a bit about some of my favourite books or just some specific books a little bit more with you all. So yeah I'm just going to show you which of her books that I actually own. So I've got the Jacqueline Wilson collection which is actually the story of Tracy Beaker and the Bed and Breakfast Star and this is really battered compared to the other ones so I think this must have been the first one that I actually received when I was a child. I've also got Double Act, Bad Girls, The Dead game which is also a Tracy Beaker book, Glove Slime, Midnight, Lola Rose, Candy Floss, Jackie Daydream which is also actually signed, Love Lessons, My Secret Diary, My Sister Jodie, Kiss, Starring Tracy Beaker, Hetty Feather which I believe is the only one of these that I haven't read because I feel like this came out quite late in like 2009 or something like that when I was at secondary school and I just thought I was too old for it at the time but now I definitely like want to read it because I just really feel like getting back into Jacqueline Wilson. Clean Break, The Diamond Girls and Cookie which came in this tin and the book is just inside it there. And in addition to this, I also found a load of really random Jacqueline Wilson bits and pieces in my cupboards where I keep all of this stuff. And I'm pretty sure I've got like calendars and other things like that, as well as the entire collection of the Tracy Beaker magazine, which came with like this creativity kit. But just here, I've got the Jacqueline Wilson diary from 2006, which um, was really interesting to have a little flick through. I've got the Jacqueline Wilson quiz book. I've got the Jacqueline Wilson address book, which was pretty funny to look back in because a lot of people from primary school who I don't speak to anymore have wrote like their phone numbers and addresses in this. So this is like a massive wave of nostalgia hit me when I read through this. And I also found this, which is called My Favourite Books. And it's a little book review book where I wrote book reviews in. So this was basically the first time I ever started doing book reviews. So a little bit of a booktube throwback there, I guess. So those are all of the Jacqueline Wilson books that I own, but I'm pretty sure that I've read most of her books that were published before, like Hetty Feather, because I read a lot of them from the library as well. I don't really consider myself as having too many auto -buy authors at the moment. Like, there are authors whose books come out and I hear about them and I'm really interested in them, but I'll normally base my decision nowadays on whether I want to buy a book or not on the premise. But when I was younger, Jacqueline Wilson, for me, she could have literally written anything. I didn't even read up on what the book was about. I would literally just go into the shops and want to buy it as soon as it came out. She was like the biggest example of an autobiography author that I have ever had. And I was literally so obsessed with her. So I definitely started reading Jacqueline Wilson when I was back in primary school. But unfortunately, I really can't remember the first Jacqueline Wilson book that I read. But I think it was around year three. I do remember reading a book in school called Lizzie Zipmouth, which was one of hers, which I don't own. But I think by that stage, I'd already read a few Jacqueline Wilson books. And that was in year three. So I'm going to say that I was around seven or eight when I started reading Jacqueline Wilson books and I was like obsessed with her for a good 
four years at least after that. I think the reason why I loved her book so much over some of the other things that were appealing to children is the fact that these books were real. I really liked reading things that I could relate to and what felt realistic to me and I thought that Jacqueline Wilson always did a good job at this and I always thought that although she was talking about some deep topics sometimes she really knew how to get it across to young people. I think she said herself that she tries to write about people who are often forgotten about in other stories, so characters who might be overlooked and I think I really like that about her as well. So when you think of Jacqueline Wilson a lot of you might think of Tracy Beaker, The Dumping Ground and all of that sort of stuff. And this was like a massive part of so many people's childhood. So saying things like Elaine the Pain or Bog Off, all of these sorts of things, they all came from Tracy Beaker. And I love the fact that there was a TV series based on this because there was only two or three books set in the Tracy Beaker world, but the TV series went on for a few years and you got to meet so many different characters that weren't in the books. So I would say that this is one of the rare times when I actually did prefer the TV show to the books because the story was developed in that so much more. So as I said before, Jacqueline Wilson's books often depicted really realistic situations and a lot of them actually weren't often presented in children's books um, very often. So I just thought it was really interesting looking through what some of these books were actually about. So for example, one that I don't own but I remember reading was called Ricky Angel and it was about a girl whose best friend got killed in a car accident I think it was and that was actually like a really emotional book I really want to read it again because I think it would still give me feels now and things like death of a friend is something that you don't often see in children's books but somehow Jacqueline Wilson managed to make it work so other examples of like these sort of topics being presented in her books that I've got here. So Clean Break is about a family who are struggling to cope with a divorce. As you can see on the cover, the dad in the eggshell isn't there because um, the parents have split up. And the main character of this one was actually really obsessed with an author who was actually drawn by the illustrator to resemble Jacqueline Wilson. So I always thought that that was really clever. Kiss was about a girl who really wanted to be kissed by one of her guy friends who she had a massive crush on. And he actually turns out to be gay. And this was one of the first books featuring an LGBT character that I'd ever read and thinking about it from my childhood in particular there is like no books that I can think of other than this that feature gay characters. This book is actually classified as being for teenage readers but I definitely didn't read it when I was a teenager so it's one that maybe I would like to go back and read now that I am a little bit older. This one, Love Lessons, I definitely think I read when I was too young. I would be really interested in reading this one now to see what I think about it because out of all of them, this is the one that I'm honestly really unsure of if I would actually enjoy because this is about a girl who thinks she has fallen in love with her art teacher and this was published in 2005 so I would have been nine years old when this came out. Um, I don't think I was old enough to really understand it at the time. So I think that if I start rereading some Jacqueline Wilson I'm probably going to start with this one because I have never read a Jacqueline Wilson book critically before so it would be really interesting to put that spin on it. Candy Floss is probably one of my favourites and I think this cover is so cute and this was about a girl who lives with a single dad and I think they find themselves homeless and they've got friends at this fairground because they used to go there every weekend and eat chips and things like that and I can't remember how it all ends up but I remember reading this multiple multiple times and absolutely loving it. I think My Sister Jodie was one of the last Jacqueline Wilson books that I read. From what I can remember it's about a girl who has always been in awe of her older sister who I think is about 13 or 14 and they moved to this new school that you can see here and it's like really big and gothic and for the first time the younger sister is the cool one and the older sister gets bullied and then she's like rebellious and she has an affair with this older boy and all of this stuff and the ending of this book at the time I was like what because this is one of like the only ones that I can actually remember how it ended so it's really stayed with me and I would probably say that this one is one of my favorites I don't know if it's just because I read it last or 
whether it's because it stayed with me so much. I don't know when I stopped reading Jacqueline Wilson books or why. I just think that I just thought that reading was not cool anymore and it was like that time and I was becoming a teenager and I thought I was too old for Jacqueline Wilson books. But now thinking back and thinking of some of the topics that they presented, yeah, they're for children, but it's also really interesting in seeing like how they presented these topics in a way that was suitable for kids. Jacqueline Wilson was also a massive inspiration to me as a writer. I have always for as long as I can remember, wanted to be a writer and Jacqueline Wilson was like my main inspiration when I was a child. When I met her, I remember I asked her like, what tips would you give to anyone who wants to be an author? And she basically told me to like, just not give up and just write as much as possible and as often as possible, just whatever you can think of, just write it and just keep persevering and practice makes perfect basically and that is something that I've always sort of taken with me. I would be really interested in going back and rereading some of my Jacqueline Wilson books. In fact I think I am going to do this probably over the summer. I hope that it doesn't ruin it for me. I really don't think it will. I think I'm more going to be hit with a wave of nostalgia and I'm also kind of leaning towards trying some of Jacqueline Wilson's new books. There's one that I don't remember the name of, but it's about a suffragette. And I would be really interested in reading that because the suffragette movement is one of those historical things that I am the most interested in. And I don't think I've ever read a book about the suffragettes. So that would just be really cool. Even if it is a children's book, I'm sure I would enjoy it because it's Jacqueline Wilson. So if anyone here is into middle grade or children's books, then definitely let me know if you've read that one because that would be really cool to see if people enjoy it. Also, I'd be really interested to know if you're from... Um, a different country that's not the UK. Did you have a childhood that involved Jacqueline Wilson or did you know of Jacqueline Wilson? Because I don't know if she was as big of a thing in different countries as she was in the UK or if it was literally just the UK where she was so popular. That would be really interesting. And if you love Jacqueline Wilson too, let me know in the comments what your favourite Jacqueline Wilson book was. I really can't choose but I would probably go for My Sister Jodie or Candy Floss. Also, if you've read any of Jacqueline Wilson's books which are targeted to teenagers, like Kiss or Love Lessons, or also even like the Girls in Love series, I know I read all of them as a child as well, and they were probably like some of my least favourite ones because I do think they were too old for me when I read them and I just didn't get them. If you read any of them as a teenager, let me know in the comments like what you thought of them because I would be tempted to give them another go now as a young adult. Other than that, that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the start of this new series. It might have been a bit rambly because I just decided to go for it and film it rather than making any real plan. But yeah, I'm hoping to do another one of these videos at some point soon. I've got a lot of ideas. I'm thinking I'm going to talk about like Lemony Snicket and Roald Dahl and Enid Blyton and Angus Wong's Perfect Snogging. Those are just the things I can think of off the top of my head. So I'm sure there are a lot more things that make me really nostalgic. So yes, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you again next time. Bye.